start recording. Uh, share my screen. Okay. Um, so let's get started. I'm recording now. If you guys have questions, feel free to interrupt me. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started adding to the website. Um, so. Uh, so on Tuesday, we learned some basic HTML syntax. Uh, we created a really simple website with just a heading uh, and a paragraph. And then we created a little list here and we added some links in here. So um, that's kind of like the basics. That pretty much is how most HTML works. We're gonna look at a few other things that we can do uh, today. Um, but th those are pretty much the basics. The thing that is probably tricky about getting started with HTML is the way that everything fits together. Um, so just noticing how our tags kind of like start and end with the open and closing angle brackets. And then we have our content in the middle. And then we have uh, whoops, the closing bracket, which looks the same, except we have the forward slash at the beginning to signify that this is the end of this part of the content. So just for example, if I took out this H1 by mistake, this closing H1, now see how that H1 styling gets applied to all of the content on my page. So in HTML, the way that I tell the document that I'm done with a section is just by closing that section. Uh, and when you're writing code in Replit, as you probably just noticed, it's going to try to anticipate what you're doing. So you don't actually end up writing every single character. So that can get kind of hard. That's kind of hard to get used to at first. Um, but it's actually trying to help you. So eventually, as you become more f familiar with the syntax, it's kind of nice. And if I just have my H1, I have my website, and now I'm ready to close it, I create my uh, opening angle bracket. Replit is giving me some options of what it thinks I might be trying to do, and I can just hit enter there. And if I actually make the angle bracket and then hit the forward slash, Replit just knows what I'm trying to do because it sees that I have an H1 over here. And if I'm trying to close a tag, the most recent tag is that H1, so it closes it for me. Um, so same thing with my paragraph tag. If I forgot to write this closing tag and I rerun uh, my website, um, actually that doesn't change anything because I have a new opening tag right here. Uh, so the HTML will actually fill that in for me. So it's not going to have a problem there. So let's add that paragraph tag back in. Uh, but if I did something like that, let's see, maybe I could do this A tag here. I forget to write this a tag. I'm going to have an issue where my links probably won't work correctly. Oh, actually, it fixed that for me too. Okay, so that's okay. HTML does fix a lot of things for me, uh, but we still want to make sure to write it in the right way. So uh, the tricky thing again about HTML is making sure we've got everything in the right order. So with our list, let's review the list. So I have a, a list here, and so this organizes all the items in my list. And it ends here, and then I have more HTML stuff inside of it. So I have a, a list with two list items. And the first list item starts here and ends here. That's the link for my about page. And the second list item starts here and ends here. That's the second link for my friends page. Uh, and inside of the list item, I actually have even more HTML. So I have this anchor tag, which turns this text into a link. So that's why the about has like a little line under it and it's highlighted a different color because it's a link to my about page. Uh, and then I have a link to my friends page and a link to my home page. So what we're going to do today is we're going to add some images and then we're going to start creating our story. So we will give the user an option to kind of take two different paths um, in our story. Uh, so I'm going to start working on that now. Um, another tag that's pretty useful is an HR tag. If I do uh, a little HR like this, that's going to make a little line on my page. So it kind of is a good way to separate different sections. That doesn't have any content inside of it, so I don't need a closing tag there. And that's something that we'll notice in a couple other instances. You don't really always need a closing tag if there's no content that goes inside of the tags. 
Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to take some notes here. So I'm going to add a comment. So I'm going to do a uh, open tag and then an exclamation point and two dashes and then another two dashes and a closing tag. And this is going to let me write whatever I want. And so I'm going to say starting uh, the uh, interactive story or choose your own adventure story. And so what I want to do here is add two images uh, with two links to go to different parts of the story. And we're going to do this. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to do here is to kind of demonstrate how different things work. It's not necessarily the way that you always have to do stuff, but it's just it's I'm going to kind of do different things to show exactly how I might organize something or how I might do something. But there's a lot of different ways to do it. And you might find other ways that are more efficient or make more sense to you. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to have a little intro to the story. And then I'm going to put some images. And it's going to look a little weird at first because we're not actually doing any styling at all. Um, but when we add styling next week, we'll be able to organize it visually in a way that's easier to read. So I'm going to add another paragraph tag here. And for my paragraph, I'm going to introduce a story. Um, so I'm going to tell a story about a uh, your, uh, from the second person perspective. So I'll say, like, you are walking in the woods. Um, you don't have to do it that way, but it's a good way to set up a choose your own adventure story because we're putting the reader uh, as the person who is, you know, being addressed. So I'm going to say you are taking a walk in the woods. And uh, I'm going to say you uh, come to a fork in the path. Do you go right or left? And so then I'll have a couple different images. Uh, to show the different options. Um, and then I'll have links. I can either link the images themselves or I can link text or both. Uh, either way is, is good. So uh, let's render that again. And so we see our text here. We see the beginning of our story. And so now I want to find a couple images to represent the different places that you'll end up uh, depending on where you click. Uh, so I'm going to go over to Google. Uh, just go to images.google.com. And just like we did with our Photoshop project, I'm going to make sure to use Creative Commons images here. Um, so I'm going to look up forest. And I'm going to go to tools and go to usage rights and go to Creative Commons licenses. And so now I just want to choose a couple different options uh, that kind of look different. Um, so let's see. Uh, this is a good one for like a path. And so let's click on that one. Just gonna, I had, I did a control click to open it in a new window so that I can get my other image. So that one looks kind of nice. Let's see if we can find one that looks a little less appealing. So it'll be uh, maybe scarier. Okay, this one is kind of good. This is a little scary looking. It's not that scary, but at least it's a little bit different. Uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time finding images because we just want to move on with the demo. But uh, you know, whatever story you guys decide to tell, you can find images um, that kind of you know reinforce the concepts that you're working with. So uh, I'm going to download these images and add them to my Replit project. Um, you could link directly to the image, but then if the image gets moved at some point, then your project will break. So we always want to get the actual content uh, on our uh, in our project. So um, gonna click small, and oh, it wants me to join. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna just go to uh, open image in new tab. There we go. Okay. So I'm just gonna save this version of it. So I'm going to hit Control S. And I'm going to save this in my downloads folder. And then I'll upload it to Replit in a minute when I'm ready. Um, so I'm going to click Save here. It has a really crazy long file name. So I'm just going to change this to uh, Forest. Uh, I'll make this the left option. 
Okay, so there's my left forest. Oh, this one is the same thing where it doesn't really give me the image that I wanted. Um, okay, so maybe raw pixel is not the right website to use. Let's see if I can find the image that I was looking at. Mm. Well, this one's kind of cool. It's like snowing. So maybe that'll be kind of weird. I'll have a snowing image. Okay, let's go with the small. Um, well, actually, I have to uh, open this in a new tab. And then I'm going to save this. And I'll call this forestright.jpg. Um, and these are Creative Commons uh, images, so I can, I can use these. I'm just going to copy links to these. And I'll put them in the comments of my document so I don't lose these. Um, so I'll just go up to, I'll scroll up to the top here and just put a little comment, image, sources. Here's the first one. Uh, and here is the second one. Okay. So I can give attribution to those later. Um, but for now, let's just get these images into the project. So I've downloaded them onto my computer, and they should be in my downloads folder. There they are. Clear up some of this stuff. So I have forest right and forest left, and I can just drag these directly on here. So that's one way to do it. So I'll demonstrate that with the forest right. So I just dragged it directly into my files. You can also upload uh, using the interface. If you click on the uh, menu button next to files and go to upload file, you can uh, choose the image. So I can go to my downloads folder and then choose forest left and click open. And so now I've got my images in here. Uh, my website is starting to get a little bit more complicated. Um, I don't actually have like a ton of files, but you could imagine if I have a lot of different pages and they all have two different images on them, I could really quickly have a lot of files and it would make it difficult to see where everything is. So I want to start organizing my project a little bit. So I'm going to click here and make a new folder and call this images. Sometimes people will just do like IMG as a shortcut for this folder or IMGS or something like that, but I'm just going to write images um, just to be clear. And then I'm going to drag my images up into that folder. And so this is going to change where the image is. And so I have to make sure to include that in the path for the image when I load it into my page. So let's add the images now, starting with the forest on the left. So to put an image onto my web page, and this is actually how all of these images work. When we're looking at this image, if I click inspect here, you're going to see the HTML that actually makes this work. Ours is not going to be as crazy because we're not going to have different resolutions. We're just going to have one resolution. But if you look closely, you can see the tag that we're about to write is right there. Image source equals null. They have a bunch of stuff going on that we're not going to worry about. But you can see that image source tag is right there. Um, and actually, I haven't looked, we haven't looked at this elements thing yet. We looked at the view source on Tuesday. We're going to look at this elements uh, tab a bit, you know, a bit more in detail uh, a little bit today and then more when we do CSS because it's really useful for doing CSS. Um, so I'm going to close out these tabs, just clean things up a little bit. So to add an image, I start with a bracket, just like any other HTML uh, tag. And then I just use IMG. That's the uh, HTML shorthand for image. An image does not have a closing bracket because it doesn't have any content in it. It doesn't have text. It doesn't have other HTML in it. What it has instead is an attribute. Remember, we made an attribute on Tuesday when we made the hypertext reference for our links. So that's one type of attribute, but attributes can do lots of different things. And for our image tag, the attribute source, or SRC, and make sure to spell that SRC. It's easier with Replit because it tells you how to spell it, but that's a, a very common mistake is spelling that wrong because it's like a shortcut. Uh, anyway, so we just write SRC for source, and then we have to tell the website where to find the image. So we're going to go into the images folder. So we just type in images. <laughs> but then I have to put a forward slash. And this forward slash indicates that I'm going into this folder called images. 
So after the forward slash, I can then write the name of the image or the file name of the image. I'm going to write forest left dot JPEG. Okay, so now when I run this page, there's my image on my website. So anytime you see an image on a website or on a you know social media post or anything like that, this is actually what's happening on the back end. Um, this is actually what the code looks like. So now we can add images to our own website. You'll notice that the image is pretty big. And without CSS, it's kind of hard to make the image smaller. I could Photoshop and make it smaller. But I'm going to add a second attribute for now just to make this very simple. I'm going to say width equals 100. I'm just going to make this image very small um, to save myself a little bit of time. So if I say width equals 100, it's going to shrink the image down to 100 pixels. It's actually a little bit too small. Let's do 200. Um, so that'll be good. So there's my first image. And for now, we're going to go over how to organize the content when we do some more stuff with CSS next week. But for now, I'm just going to put everything one after the other. Most websites are just laid out from the top to the bottom. And to lay things out horizontally, we actually need to use CSS. So we're going to wait until next week to do that. So I have my image, and now I'm going to create a link so that my user can click to go down this path. So I'm going to make an anchor tag, and I'm going to say href. And we'll fill that in later. For now, I'm just going to put a little hashtag there. Um, that's a good way to just have a stand in. So you can actually click on it, but it won't go anywhere. So I'm just going to put a hashtag there um, as a stand in for now. And I'm going to write take the left path and then close my anchor tag. So that's the first option in the story. And notice that the image and the anchor tag are right, right next to each other. That's because the way it's set up, uh, it's not in a paragraph, which usually takes up a whole block. Um, but anchors and images don't take up a whole block. So that's something that, again, we'll fix with CSS. If you don't like that and you want a quick fix, you can put in a dr tag. That's a break tag. And that's just going to break up the content. So it's just going to move the next line uh, down on your page. OK, so don't use the dr tag too much because we can really use CSS for a lot of styling stuff. Uh, I'm just using it for now since we haven't introduced CSS yet. Um, so one quick thing with the image, you have to be very careful about the source. If I don't have the folder here, it's not going to work. And what we're going to see is this broken image icon. So if you see an icon like that, that means it can't find the image. And so you need to make sure to get your source right. Um, so we need to make sure to put images slash forest left. You have to have the image extension. If I don't have the extension in here, it's not going to work. And then it also has to be spelled very carefully. If I have like a capital F or something like that, it's not going to be able to find the image. So you have to make sure that you use the path for the folder that you're using, as well as the exact right name of the file. HTML is very particular about how files are. It won't load the file correctly if, if we don't use the exact same uh, uh, text. OK, so let's add our second image. I'm going to put another break tag here. This is a little bit silly uh, for, from a modern uh, web perspective, but we'll, we'll take these out next week. And I'm just going to add my second image. So I put another image tag, another source, and I use the images folder again. And this time I'm saying forestright.jpg. And I'm going to use the same width. So I'm going to say width equals 200. Even though these images are different resolutions, they will take up the same width. And so that's good enough. We can fix that with CSS later. So we have take the left path. And now we have href take the right path. OK. So uh, let's put a break here as well. And I'm going to open this up in the preview window. So I'm going to click Open in a new tab and take a look at this full screen. You also notice that the website, everything is over on the left. That's another thing that we can fix with CSS. Uh, but for now, with basic HTML, we can't move stuff over. Um, so if I click Take the Left Path, it just puts this little hashtag here. So that's just a placeholder. We'll fill that in in a second. And then if I click Take the Right Path, 
it does the same thing. So let's fill in those pages, but I'm gonna add another folder because we're gonna to start to have a lot of HTML pages, and this is also gonna be a good way for us to, to go over how to set up your files so that you can keep things nice and organized and make sure everything still works. Um, so that's the last thing we're gonna do is just add in those links. I'm not gonna fill out the whole story today because that would take me, you know, depending on how long the story is, I would have to spend a lot of time on that. Um, but I'm just gonna fill out a couple extra pages um, just to give a sense of uh, how we would start working. this. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new folder in my main uh, file section, and I'm just gonna call this story. And so this is where all the pages for my story will go. And I'm just gonna name these pages after uh, sort of where uh, you know the names of the images are, just to keep things kind of organized. You don't have to do it that way. Um, it won't change the functionality, but it'll just make it easier for me to understand where each link is going to. So I'm gonna, uh, actually, I could add a, add a blank file, but since most of these pages are gonna be kind of the same, what I'm gonna do is just duplicate my index page uh, a couple times. So I'm gonna click on here and click duplicate. And I'll call this forestleft.html. So that way it's just really easy for me to know which image this connects to. So then I can just duplicate either one of these. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate this and call this forestright.html. So now I have my next two branches that go from these two parts. Um, so let's go back to index.html for a second, and I'll just fill in these links. So again, just like my image, now that I have this new folder, I have to go into the folder first and then add a slash to say this is a folder. So it's not like my about.html or friends.html, those I can just write the actual file name because they're in the same folder as my website. And there's a trick that we're gonna run into that I'm gonna go over once we get to those pages with those links as well. So we have to go into story first, and the first link that we're gonna go to is forest, oops, left.html. Uh, let's move this over just a little bit. And for our second link, we're going to go into the story folder and go to forestwrites.html. Uh, so now we have our links connected to our new pages. Um, and so we're going to edit those pages, but I'll show you one issue that we're going to have to fix in a second. Let's go back to our preview site. If I go to take the left path, so you'll notice a couple things right away. One is that my images are broken, okay? Because the path has changed. I'm in a folder now. And so if I want those images to work, I actually have to go back to a previous uh, page. I have to go back one folder and then go into my images folder. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. But the next thing that's gonna be broken is if I try to go to my about page from here, it's not found. And this is for the same reason, I'm inside this folder now. And now that I'm inside the story folder, I can't see all the other stuff in my project. I have to go back a folder to make those things work. So let's go to forestleft.html. Um, and I'm gonna keep a few things from here. So I'm gonna delete some of this, these comments and stuff, because those are in my index page. I don't really need those taking up all this space here, but I'm gonna fix a few things here. So we've arrived in the forest, so I'm gonna move this first image. I'm gonna keep it, uh, but I'm gonna move it up so it's above the paragraph. Um, and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So let's make it like 400 pixels. And then I'm gonna change the text here. So uh, we're gonna be in the left side forest. So I'll just say you are in, uh, you go to the left. And, you know, the next part of the story will start here. I'm not sure what that's going to be. Uh, you know, it could be anything, really. Um, but my formatting is a little bit off. Let's move this back. Okay, so you go to the left, and let's say you see a snake. Okay, I'm not going to add that quite yet, but that's what we'll be headed towards. So then I'm going to get rid of these extra things here. We'll add those later. Uh, but now we've got the next part of our story. 
So we see the same image that we just clicked on, and it says you go to the left, you see a snake. Okay. So, oh, whoops, I edited my index.html. I always do this. Okay, I'm going to, so if you make this mistake, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. I do this all the time where I thought I was editing forest uh, left.html, but I was actually editing index.html, which is why the homepage of my website looks wrong. So I need to fix that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control A, copy. So I've copied the changes that I made, and then I'm just going to hit Control Z a bunch of times to undo this. And eventually I'll get back to what the page should look like. Okay. So then I'm going to save that. I'm going to open up forestleft.html. Let's move this over here. Now I'm going to select this and delete and then paste. And hopefully that worked. So now if I click on take the left path. Okay, so we go to the left, we see a snake, but our image is broken. So how do we fix the image? Well, so we're inside this story folder here. And our images folder is back here. So we need to go back to our main folder, files, and then go into images. And so there's a trick for how to go back. You just do dot, dot, and then slash. This is basically a shorthand in most computer languages for like go back one directory is dot, dot. I'm gonna save this. And now our image uh, will work again. I have to go back to this page. Okay, so now we have our image. So our links are still not going to work. If I click about, we're going to go to the wrong place. So that's for the same reason. If I want to go back to the main directory, I have to say dot, dot, slash, and then about.html. Same thing with my uh, friends page, dot, dot, slash, friends.html. Now I've fixed this page. OK, so if I go to the left, I see this image, and then uh, I don't have like a home link. Maybe I'll add that later. But if I go to about, there's my about page and there's my home page. Okay, so maybe we'll add a little home link here. So we'll say href is dot dot slash index dot html. That's our home page. And so I'll just say home, close the anchor, close the list item. There we go. So we just have to do the same thing for forest right, and we're just going to change the image. So I'm going to select all of this HTML and uh, control C, copy, and then go to forest right. This is still a copy of our index page, so I'm just going to delete it and then control V, paste. And all I really need to change here is the image. So this is going to be forest right.jpg. And then I need to change the text because we're in a different part of the story. So I'm going to say you go to the right. And what are we going to see in the right? Let's say you see a spider. We have a snake in one direction and a spider in the other. Let's test that real quick. So if we go to the right, there you go. There's the snow image, uh, which also has spiders in it. I hope spiders live in snow. I don't know. Uh, so we say you go to the right, you see a spider, and then hopefully these links work. Yeah, we can go back to the... Okay. So. Whoops, I didn't mean to hit save there. So I'm going to save this. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, the organizational stuff. That's one of the kind of trickiest things for most people who are creating their first website is getting that organizational stuff right, where you have your images linked in the right place, your pages linked in the right place. And that's, so even though our website isn't actually all that complicated, that's why I want to go over creating those folders and linking to the right place, because that's one of the main things that you have to be able to do uh, to make a website and to be able to understand. Uh, and so that's a, just an easy way to go over it. So for for the story, you know, you can keep going. You can have branches. They can keep going out more or they can come together. Um, it's up to you guys how you want to tell the story. You can think of a simple story to tell. You don't need like a million pages, but, you know, if you have like, uh, right now I have like three pages. If you have like five or six pages, that should be good. Um, there's actually a good, let me see if I can find it. Uh, there's a good, uh, website about branching, uh, story structures. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, 
Um, you know what? I think if I look in my notes for my game design class, I'll be able to find it, hopefully. Actually. Uh, maybe under level design. Here it is. Okay, sweet. Uh, I reference this a lot because it's really useful. Uh, this is, we don't have to make stories that are this crazy, but this is just like a really good example of how different interactive stories work or choose your own adventure style stories. So one style is you start in one place and then you just keep branching and branching. And so you have lots and lots of different endings. Um, this requires a lot of work because you have to make all these different pages. Uh, and so then you can have some good endings and some bad endings. So it has a lot of content that you have to create. Um, so that's how most of the Choose Your Own Adventure uh, stories are written. Um, but there's other styles that kind of take advantage of doing different things. So you don't have to create quite as much content. So this is the gauntlet style where you have a bunch of main things that you have to go to and they branch to bad endings. And then you have a good ending at the end. So. There's a bunch of parts where it's kind of like the story ends if you go the wrong direction. And then there's one good ending at the end. Um, that's another one that's pretty popular with choosing your own adventure novels uh, and hypertext fiction. This is a very complicated one, branch and bottleneck, where you have parts where you have a lot of different options, but they all lead back to one main story. Um, so you can link in that way. You can see this gets quite complicated. Um, and then open map is when you have lots of pages that point to lots of other different pages and you might have a good outcome and a bad outcome somewhere uh ending but you also have a lot of just like uh kind of looping around um and so yeah those are kind of the main types i'll put a link to this in the voice chat and i'll add it in the video description as well um so that just is a good way to visualize what a branching story might look like. Um, okay. Is there anything else I want to cover? I think that's it for today. This link is still the same. So you guys can, you know, this is the same link for this part. Next week, we're going to start with CSS. So I'll make a different link. But if you go there, you can fork that uh, my project and add your own content into it. So you can practice adding your own images, adding your own text. Um, if you want to add more pages, you can practice that as well. Next week, we'll add some CSS, so we'll add some styling. We'll be able to change the layout, the colors, uh, the typography, and stuff like that. Um, and then eventually, we'll add in some JavaScript, some other stuff as well. Um, OK, so I'm going to stop the recording.